हरी राधा गोविंद जी की जय 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 श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्र सुदर्शन शक्ल जी की जय जय श्री गिरिराज गोवर्धन की जय जय श्री श्री नीताय गौरंग की जय जय श्री श्रृंग भगवान की जय जय श्री ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज शिव भूपाल की जय शिव भक्ति रक्षक श्री राम गोस्वामी महाराज की जय शिव भक्ति वेदांत नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज की जय शिव भक्ति जीवन जनार्दन गोस्वामी महाराज धीरोभाव महामहोत्सव थी की यू नो ही हैज हिज डिस अपियरेंस एंड अपियरेंस डेज Five days apart, yeah. so every year they go to Karakpur, which is the place of his temple, and uh, they have a like a one week long festival. Mm-hmm. Starts with I, I can't remember now whether it was the appearance or the disappearance day on this day. So we'll speak a little bit about him, not not very long. Jai Shri Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. जय अनंतकोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय समागत गौर भक्त वृंद की जय नीताय गौर प्रेमा नंदे हरि हरि बो वंदे हम श्री गुरु श्री जता पद कमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवाश्रीप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथ सजीव साइत सवधूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखा ज्ञानतिमिरंद ज्ञानंजनशलाक चक्षुरुन मिल तस्म श्रीगुर नम वंशकलपतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पवने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महाबदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदा थे कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्यमने गौरातिशे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगतपथे गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त खांशन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वृंदाय तुलसी देवाय प्रियाय केशव से कृष्ण भक्ति प्रदे देवी सच्चाय नमो नम पंचतवात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वूपत भक्तवतारम भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति <coughs> श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधार श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे माय दंडवत प्रणाम्स टू द लोटस फीट ऑफ माय मोस्ट वर्शिपेबल बिलवेड गुरुदेव नित्य लीला प्रविष्टौ विष्णु पाद परमहंस अस्तो धरसत 
Sri Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada and my same Dandavat Pranams to the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Gurudevs Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Ashto Tarasata Sri Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sri Dhar Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. <coughs> my Dandavat pranams to the lotus feet of all my Sri Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga and my Dandavat pranams to all the Vaishnavas and all the Vaishnavas. You know, today I was review reviewing a verse that I had attempted to quote the other day. I partly qu quoted it. But there was a number of other verses that were connected with that verse. It was um, about Shuddha Sattva Visheshatma Prema Suryam Susamya Bhak Ruchi Vischitta Mashrinya Kridaso Bhava Uchite that was the verse we were discussing about how Rupa Goswami is explaining how bhav descends into the heart of the sadhak. So I opened up the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu. I haven't read this part for quite a long time. And uh, started reading. It was so fulfilling and so wonderful to read that section where there's a number of verses quoted in relation to this subject matter, who is a sadhaka, what constitutes sadhana, um, what constitutes bhav, right? And there's explanations there by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and also Gurudev has his additions that he adds there. But it's such a beautiful, complete picture of, the, you know, everything that Srila Gurudev uh, was trying to give to the devotees around the world, like a synopsis. Because what was Gurudev's mission? Uh, if, we were to, if we were to say what Gurudev's mission is, and especially when he was personally here, what would we, what would we say is Gurudev's mission? Because every Acharya has specific mission, right? It's very clear what Srila Prabhupada's mission was to accomplish, what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta serves with his mission. Yeah. So, I ask you to say. An article during Srila Kaurya and Srila Kaurya. Oh, is that the microphone? Jai Ho! There we go. This, uh, we've added another microphone for all of you who are watching through Facebook, because you couldn't hear the dialogue from the audience. So understanding that that was a major flaw, we've corrected it. And beginning today with our Rajendra Nandan Prabhu, we are beginning the process of handing the microphone whenever anybody is speaking anything, so that all of you can hear. OK. Can again? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> You asked, well, what is the purpose which Gurudev came? And like, like we say, Papa covered everything, but he specialized in establishing Sambandha. Gurudev came, his speciality was to clarify the Prayojan, which is stated by Rupa Goswami in Architecture Literature, Karmiya Vitina Kala, uh, to establish um, the mood of Ragmarg in the material world, especially. Whereas following the moods of the maid servants of Shri Mukti Vaidya Kali. Just in simple terms, is to, to introduce uh, greed for 
God Bhakti into uh, follow the path of the mind on the Radhika associates of Sri Krishna, especially to become a follower of those who serve Krishna Jalai. You can also. I'm just listening to my. Okay, you can do it after. <laughs> yeah, I I also second all that you have said, and and for me it became so clear this this um, idea and potentiality to become a servant of Shrimati Radhika. Like I never really that was not such a clear thing in my life. And I love how good is that I've come to to um, tell you to forget that Krishna is God. Something like that. That's just yeah. what it is. Like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that, that concept of becoming a Pamyadasi of Shrimati Radhika. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just following on what everybody has said, um, I think one speciality of what Gurudev is given, his mission is demonstrating the mood of a Brajbasi. What is the mood of a Brajbasi? And creating that aspiration and that greed to follow and to, to follow in the footsteps of the Brajbasis and particularly to have that prayojan of, oh, what is it to be a Mandri or Srimati Radhika and to follow in that line of Rupa Mandri. And what kind of moods in sadhana we need to attain that goal? Yeah. Very good. Chand Chandra Gadini can can speak. She can, no, she can speak in Spanish, and then you translate. Okay. Solamente Urude nos dijo que hiciéramos vaya. that we should concentrate in our bhajan. That's what she feels that he came to give. That is true, yeah. also. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. I say very good in Spanish. Mucho gusto. Muy bien. Muy bien. Muy bien. I took some Spanish, <laughs> but it's been a long time. Did you also want to add something to that? That's why you're standing there, my dear godmother. Well, you have to do it in the microphone so that everybody can hear in the Facebook, yes. He came out of an attitude of causeless cloud of nectar falling, or beautiful rain falling from the spiritual sky, and he came to open our eyes so we could see it or, or feel it. Um, of course, he's following the instruction of his spiritual master, Siksha Guru Srila Prabhupada, who asked him to help and advised his students at the last moments of his presence on earth to listen to Srila Narayan Maharaj, we told. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've come to understand that, that that's an eternal thing. That is, the spiritual master is always encouraging us so we can feel very grateful to Sri Gurudev for giving us a taste of the nectar that he realized in the presence of his dear Gurudev coming from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and the entire Parampara. And so he's more kind to me than I could ever understand. This is for the audience, that microphone, so we'll keep it over there. Probably better if we have a chair to put it on or something, so because otherwise every time they have to reach down to the floor. <clears throat> so the, those are very nice um, answers all of you gave. Very nice answers. And uh, when I think of, um, you know, Srila Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj's contribution, his specific contribution, this is actually the the real question is, what is his specific mission, you see? And it's, it's all true, everything that you, you all said, you, you hit the chief points, you see. Uh, 
Hansakuti Prabhu mentioned to fulfill Srila Prabhupada's uh, request to him to help his disciples. But then the question comes to help his disciples how? What specific type of help was needed by his disciples? What would be coming in their spiritual lives as they develop? Uh, Prabhupada, of course, knew. I mean, even we can see now the vast difference between the very initial stages of our attempts to come on the path of bhakti and having studied the shastras, Parachetan, Charitamrita, Bhagavatam, you know, we have an idea, we have some understanding of, like in perspective, we can also see that at a certain stage we didn't have this, we didn't have this understanding, but then as we develop more, then another conception, another understanding <clears throat> became part of our realization of Krishna consciousness, right? So the actual mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, what is the ultimate gift that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to give, we all knew when we became devotees that he came to give love of God, right? That was understood, and it is understood, that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna combined, very special incarnation to who has come to distribute love of God, love of Krishna. I mean, just the very verse of Rupa Goswami, Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> he's coming to give Krishna Prema. But who did he give it through? Who, who did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu give Krishna Prem through? Did he give it himself personally? Yes. He also gave it to himself. He gave it himself while he was on the planet. Directly he gave Krishna Prem. But especially, what was his plan for giving Krishna Prem to the living entities? Exactly. He instructed his most intimate disciples, Rupa Goswami especially, Sanatana Goswami, Radhanath Das Goswami. It is through them who manifested also the literatures that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted them to write. He empowered them to write these literatures. Huh? And without them writing those literatures, then Mahaprabhu's mission would not be completed. Would not be completed. Imagine if we didn't have the Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Huh? If each one of the Goswamis had not made their contribution, hmm, this mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would not have been established in this world. So that's why Nartam Das Thakur. What did he tell? Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam. Stapitam Yena Bhutale. This is his prayer to Rupa Goswami. That, oh, you are the personality. Swayam Rupa. Rupa Goswami. You are the personality who fulfilled the Mano Bishta. What does Mano Abhishta mean? That's right. Of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You fulfilled it by doing what? By establishing in this world. Stapitam means to establish. Yena Bhutale. Bhutale means here in this world. Just like the Maum Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prastaya, Bhutale means in this world. So you established this mission to fulfill the inner heart's desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swa Padantikam. When will you, O Rupa Goswami, uh, grant me the shade and shelter of your lotus feet? 
So the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu primarily is established in this world by Srila Prabhupada Goswami, very specifically. And the other Goswamis, they also could recognize that what Srila Rupa Goswami had given, even though Srila Sanatana Goswami had his specific literatures that Mahaprabhu empowered him to write. Uh, but still, and even though he's the elder brother and the spiritual master of Rupa Goswami, uh, all the Gaudiya Vaishnavas from that time, they are known as Rupanubas. Hmm? And Rupa Raghunatha Pade Hoive Akuti. Right? Naratam Das Thakur. Naratam Das Thakur and his songs are so important. We cannot even imagine. Srila Prabhupada, he gave the seeds for, for these songs by singing them, recording them himself, and in many cases, even giving a purport to the songs. But it will take time for a disciple to realize what is really the deep meaning of Goranga Bolite Habe, all these moods. And the moods of Braj Bhakti, as you told. Raga Nuga Bhakti, Rupa Nuga Bhakti. This is what Srila mm, Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayamars came to teach all of the devotees. Mm -hmm. He certainly did. He came to teach this. And he was even doing it while he was still there in Mathura by being the Siksha Guru, the Shravan Guru. Even for Iskand leaders who were coming to him, so many different lectures and classes he gave. But Krishna wanted him to come to the whole world. So therefore it was arranged by Krishna that he would begin to travel the whole world. And it's very obvious what he gave. You can see from his books, if you study his books, what specific. He gave a focus. Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar says, this parampara is a siksha parampara. And he said, he used the term telescopic system, that it is a telescopic system. And then he explained how in a telescope, you have like a big telescope, but you have many different lenses that are inside of that telescope. Each lens is magnifying for the previous lens. Somehow or other they do that technologically. Right? and even for the gigantic telescopes that look into the stars. But it's a telescopic system, so he, what he was explaining is that the siksha, the conceptions, are coming down in the disciplic succession, and each acharya is adding uh, another focus. Right? So if anybody has the argument, because we've heard this argument many times, well, everything's in Srila Prabhupada's books. That's one of their defenses, uh, defending themselves against attaining the benefit of, of associating with pure Vaishnavas and, and their literature is what they gave. But even everything is there, how will you understand it? Uh, and if someone thinks that 10 years, 20 years is a sufficient length of time that now we've really advanced, well, it's not a fact, see? And the thing is, the, that advancement really depends upon many factors, just like what we've been reading in Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur's book, Upadesha Amrita Commentaries here. There's so many principles that have to be practiced. And there's different levels of practicing them. The practicing of taking care of Tulsi, like we were reading yesterday, a complete neophyte devotee, his mood in worshiping Tulsi and taking care of Tulsi and so forth is not the same 
as a very advanced Vaishnava, or the taking care of the deities, doing the archana, and all these things, not the same. And someone can advance in the pathway of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, even to the stage of Nishta. Hmm? They can advance in the path of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. But Ruchi, after Nishta comes Ruchi. How will that come? That will only come by the mercy of pure Vaishnavas and by associating with them, by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and appreciating their relishing, because they are relishing the deep, deep meanings of Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Gurudev's mission is the same, he would say that. My mission is the same as Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, the same as my Guru Maharaj, it is the same as Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and so forth. And it is. But the audience is different. Each Acharya has his own circumstances in which he preaches the message of Mahaprabhu. And there's a big difference between preaching in India and that cultural environment and so forth and preaching in the West to persons who have no uh, awareness or they don't know anything about Vedic knowledge and so forth. So each Acharya forms his mission as he goes to preach. The mission takes shape, you know. And Srila Gurudev's mission, he himself had already understood what he is coming to the West to give. Because so many were coming to him already for so many years. And he, he, he himself told that we are seeing that some appetite is now developing, you know. Like, if you are not hungry, how are you going to start eating? So appetite has to be there. Hunger has to be there. And Gurudev was noticing that at that time period, we're talking about the late 80s and early 90s, so some devotees had been devotees for 20 years or so, been chanting and so forth, and now there was an interest coming. There was you know, some desire to know, to hear, to understand these things. So he was now understanding, oh, okay, this is why my beloved Swamiji, he gave me this instruction to help. Yeah. And then when he did come to the West by various circumstances, then he saw directly. He saw directly. Now I understand why he wanted me to help his disciples. Because so much help was needed. And many devotees had gone to the critical stages in their advancement, which were you know, time, like he, he, he explained, there's a critical stage every devotee will have to go through where they've made some advancement in terms of giving up the material connections and attachments and so forth, coming onto the pathway of bhakti. However, they're not com completely free from the anartas, not completely free from them. And if, when they come to this critical stage, what he told, is that at a certain critical point, there may be a difficulty that arises that they have not yet developed enough attraction towards Krishna, his Dham, his associates, and in general, Braj. You see? They haven't yet developed enough of that, even though the Krishna book is there and so forth. Now it requires that at that critical stage they will have to hear these topics. So Gurudev told that they can be pulled back at that stage if they don't have the association of such a Vaishnava from whom they can hear. They may be pulled back. And even if they're not pulled back and gone back into the material world, they may not advance so much because they'll be stuck. And Gurudev told that, he, he was asking, uh, I won't tell the whole story, but about various ISKCON leaders, why did they fall down? Why did they, he was asking one of the ISKCON leaders, 
Why did they fall down? These other ones. This is when he went to Costa Rica the first time. And then Gurudev said they fell down because they did not hear these things. So Gurudev, his mission was very timely. And of course, that's always arranged by Krishna when the Acharya comes and under what circumstances. But everything was ripe. There were so many souls, so many jivas waiting, you know, to hear these things. And then when Gurudev came, and as, as he was traveling, he was also producing his books every single day, producing his books, translating, giving more, giving more. So really, Gurudev completed the mission of Srila Prabhupada, what was needed. Jai Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandhar Vipindra Dhari Raja Govinda Jiyo Ki Jai Jai Shri Raja And, uh, you know, now when we read the books of Srila Prabhupada, like the Nectar of Devotion, you know, so much more opens up because of the Siksha that we had, and so much more appreciation, and so much more longing, you know, like that. Anyway, I was just sharing that. Um, but we'll continue with the Upadesha Amrita here. Um, Yesterday we read about Sadhu Sangha. We read about Sadhu Sangha. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying it's extremely necessary for sadhakas to associate with devotees of Bhagavan. That means pure devotees. Those who are ill-natured like jnanis and karmis, they're not devotees. They're ill-natured. They're not devotees. One should associate with persons who are of the same devotional mood, svajatiya. So we learned this uh, criterion many years ago from Gurudev. He pointed this out. What is sadhusanga? It has three uh, necessary criterion to be considered sadhusanga. Svajatiya shaye snigdhe sadhusanga svatolvade. So Swajatiya means who has the same Ishtadev. Jatiya means like dynasty or family or like that. So the sadhu to whom we're associating, if they are, let's say, although they may be advanced Vaishnavas, but they're in, in the uh, Ramanuja Sampradaya or they are worshippers of Sita Ram, Lakshman Hanuman, uh, although they're worshipping Bhagavan, but this is not Swajatiya. Swajatiya means the line of Rupa Goswami. There cannot be anything more Swajatiya than that. Now there are various Vaishnavas who are very excellent Vaishnavas in Braj, but some of them are not in the line, uh, in this line, Rupa Goswami line and so forth. So we can, uh, we can associate with them, but if we come under their guidance, um, and continue to hear their harikata and focus in that way, that will not be the favorable sadhu sangha for us. Because svajatiya is the first criterion. Hmm? Then, ashay snigde, the second quality is that they have to have snigda, which means affection. They have to have affection. In other words, they have to be willing to give their association to you. They may be svajatiya, but they may not be inclined to uh, uh, to accept you in that way, like as a, as a disciple or as a follower. You know, they may not. So that's required. In order to associate with them, they have to be affectionate to you. And the third one is. Sadhu Sangha Svato Vare. Svataha Vara. vara. Svato Vare. It means they're in a greater position of spiritual advancement than you are. Then, if you have, because if they're on the same level as you, 
that will not be technically considered to be sadhusanga. You see? They're, they have to be in a superior position for it to really be truly the most favorable sadhusanga. So all those criterion were perfectly fulfilled with Srila Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj, Gaur Govinda Maharaj, Bhakti Balabhatir Tamara, all of these contemporary personalities, Bhakti Vidyan Bharati Maharaj, all were fulfilling these three, you know. So how fortunate, how fortunate. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying uh, that if they are not, uh, one should associate with persons who are of the same devotional mood, Svajatiya, affectionate to oneself, Snigda, passionate about Bhakti, and more advanced than oneself. Otherwise, the sadhaka's heart will not take shelter of Shuddha Bhakti. That's an amazing sentence. If they're not, then the sadhaka's heart cannot take shelter of Shuddha Bhakti. In this regard, the rules of sat satsanga have been given in Hari Bhakti Suddhodaya. We read that verse which is telling about the crystal and how it reflects whatever color is put near to it and association works in the same way one must be particularly careful in this regard hmm? among all the limbs of bhakti association with devotees is one principal limb and now we're coming to the five limbs of bhakti i like this very much it's actually mentioned twice uh, this five limbs of bhakti. Uh, you know? Anybody know the, the verse? I don't know the verse. I just know the reference. Okay. Anyone know the verse? Begins with sadhu sangha. <coughs> sadhu sangha nam kirtan bhagavat shravan matura vasa Shri Murtir Shraddhaya Sevan. Okay, so we're reading this now. Amongst the 64 limbs of bhakti, the following five are foremost. One, serving the deity. Two, relishing the purport of Srimad Bhagavatam with rasik bhaktas. Number three, associating with devotees more advanced than oneself, who are affectionate to oneself and in the same mood. That's the third. Fourth item, performing Nam Sankirtan. And fifth item, residing in Mathura. So of these five types of sadhana, two are most prominent. Guess what they are? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Actually, it says Vaishnava Seva, Nam Samkirtan and Vaishnava Seva. But that means Sadhu Sangha. The Padma Purana says, Yena Janma Sahasrani Vasudeva Nishevita Tanmuke Harinamani Sada Tishtanti Bharata. The purport is that the fruit obtained by those who have served the deity for many lifetimes is that Harinam perpetually resides on their tongue. That is, their tongues constantly vibrate Harinam. So this is saying, Yena Janma Sahasrani. Sahasrani means thousands of lives. That person, Yena Janma Sahasrani, who for thousands of lives have done what? Vasudeva Nishevita. They have served the deity form of Krishna, Vasudeva. Tanmuke, on their mukha, in their mouth. Harinamani Sadatishtanti. Harinam is always on their tongues. Then comes the famous verse. Actually, two verses. Famous two verses. And they're quoted from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu here. Nama chintamani krishnas. 
Anyone knows that verse? Chaitanya Rasavigraha. Purna, Purna Shuddho Nitya Mukto Abhinatvam Nama Namino. This is a very important verse. Nama Chintamani Krishna. So this is a verse about Krishna Nam. And what is Krishna Nam being referred to here as? Chintamani. What is Chintamani? Spiritual touchstone. Right? When it touches anything, it can turn into gold. You know? So here, Rupa Goswami, who's written this verse, he says, Nama Chintamani Krishnas. The name of Krishna is Chintamani. Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha. Yes. It is fully conscious. Chaitanya means conscious. And it is the form of all rasa. It is the rasa vigraha, fully conscious rasa vigraha. Purna shuddho nitya mukta. Purna means it is full, complete, purna. Huh? Shuddho, absolutely pure. Nitya mukto eternally liberated and the last line says abhinatvam nama namino nama means the holy name and namino means who is named and abhinatvam means it is non-different between the person krishna and his name then the next verse is also very well known atak shri krishna Nam Adi. Who knows this verse? Huh? Atak Shri Krishna Nam Adi Na Bhaved Grahyam Indriyai Sevon Mukehi Jivado Swayam Eva Spurati Adha. So it says here, Atak Shri Krishna Namadi Nabaved Grayamindriya. The name, form, qualities, pastimes. Here it says Nam Adi. So Adi means beginning with. Beginning with his name. Uh, the name, form, qualities, pastimes, entourage, everything pertaining to Shri Krishna is not materially uh, perceptive, uh, perceivable by the material senses hmm? because it's completely transcendental can our material senses perceive transcendence directly no no our senses cannot touch the transcendental reality so grahyam indriyat by the material senses it cannot be uh, perceived However, there is a way. Sevon Mukehi Jivado. Sevon Mukata, this is called. Sevon Mukehi. Sevon Mukata means the tendency to serve. Sevon Mukata. Sevon Mukehi Jivado. By developing the mood of serving. Krishna's name, form, qualities, pastimes, beginning with the tongue. Jiva, jiva means tongue. Jivado. So, when this happens, that this mood of service comes and the person is chanting with Sevon Mukata, then Swayam Eva Spurati Adha. Swayam Eva means he himself his name, his qualities, his form, they become spurat, spurati, manifested. Where? On those material senses. And of course the senses become transcendental. Uh, very important shloka. So here Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's 
uh, translating these two verses as follows. Sri Nam and Sri Krishna are one and the same. They are the personified form of a wish-fulfilling jewel. The embodiment of transcendental rasa. They are complete. They are pure. That is, they are devoid of any material connection. They are transcendental and spiritual. The material tongue, it cannot chant the fully transcendental holy name. <clears throat> but when the living entity becomes inclined toward the service of Sri Krishna, which is called Krishna Sevan Mukha, and when his body is pure and transcendental, the transcendental holy name mercifully descends of its own accord and dances on his tongue. Such is the independent mercy of spiritual objects. Very nice. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So, Sri Mathura Mandala, the holy name of Bhagavan, the Srimad Bhagavatam, and other devotional scriptures, the pure devotee, and the form of the deity, all these five, they are all transcendental. These list of five, all of these are transcendental. And by associating with them, one quickly attains bhav and Krishna bhakti. By associating with them. Hmm. I still have a couple? Or you want to start now? You're ready. Yes, You're ready. Okay. I am ready. Offering has been done. Everything. Yeah, ready, ready. Okay. So tomorrow, we're going to hear Raga Nuga Bhakti and activities favorable to Bhakti. Tat, tat, tat Karma Pravartana. We'll yeah. hear that in our class tomorrow. And that will complete. Actually, it completes this whole section. But because we have our time restraint, if I started reading this, it would certainly turn into two, five, and ten minutes. So we're not going to go there because we have an agreement. <laughs> so Gaur Premanande, Sri Upadesh Amritam Ki Jai, Sri La Sachidananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai, Sri Rupa Goswami Pada Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande. Jai Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharvika Giridhari Radha Vinod Vihari Radha Govinda Jiu Ki Jai Shri Gaur Arati Ki Jai Radha Krishna Jugal Arati Ki Jai Your turn. Okay. Ah. <laughs> I love it when devotees are they like to sing the artist. <laughs>